Welcome to this brief overview of affinity analysis made easy. In this example, we're going to be carrying out a basket analysis by modeling product affinity using IBM SPSS Modeler version 15. In IBM SPSS Modeler, there are multiple data sources that we can call and file types that we can connect to in order to manipulate and transform the data prior to the modeling process itself. Within the modeling process, we can see that there are a number of different analytical procedures that we can bring to bear. Let's begin by looking at the data source in this example, and we can do so by running what's called a data audit process. That's a data audit uh, procedure here, which will give me an overview of the data that we've got to deal with. Here I have 17 fields, and it shows me, for example, the range of values that customers have in terms of their spending patterns, but on various products. We can see the payment methods that they have used over time, whether it be card, cash, or check. And we can see the different product categories that they've actually made purchases in, whether that be lighting and heating, uh, gardening, bedroom, living room, or kitchen. In this case, we want to establish the product affinities, i.e. what products tend to get purchased together. To begin with, we can run a web plot which provides a powerful graphical representation of product affinity. If we maximize the result and output, we can immediately see that the plot itself shows the relationship between every product category and every single other product category, with thicker lines indicating stronger relationships. So for example here, the relationship between textiles and living room uh, finds 145 connections, whereas the relationship between living room and travel finds only 48. In the same sense, we can see that kitchen is strongly related to purchases and dining, and dining in turn is strongly related to purchases and electricals. And then we have a three-way relationship between electricals, gardening, and home office, all showing strong affinities within these product categories. In fact, we can control the strength of the relationships that we wish to mask or highlight by clicking on the double arrow button at the top here, going to controls, and telling the web plot what should relate, what should constitute a strong or weak relationship, thus uh, fading out the weaker relationships and concentrating just on the stronger ones. We can interact with this chart and actually ask it to select uh, cases where there are strong relationships between the categories. But rather than do that, let's move to the modeling process itself and see if we can develop an affinity model. Affinity or basket analysis is pretty easy to carry out using SPSS Modeler. In fact, we have some procedures which are specifically designed for that. They're known as the association procedures, and I can call them up by clicking on the association tab. When we look inside this tab, we can see that in fact there's a, a special procedure known as the sequence analysis uh, uh, procedure, and that's focusing on really on the order in which uh, product categories or products are actually purchased. In this case, we're not really interested in that. We're more interested in deriving a series of rules which quantify the strength of the affinities, uh, the products that are being purchased uh, within the baskets uh, of the customers themselves. So to do so, I can call that algorithm by double-clicking on it. It immediately connects to the home goods data source. And I can right-click on it to configure it a little bit, change the default settings in order to get the best rules out of it. So I'll do that right now. Here I'm changing what's called the minimum rule support. I'll come to that in a moment. And the minimum rule confidence. If I run the procedure now, we can see that it immediately produces a modeling nugget for us. This is a, a physical object that we can connect to new data in order to make uh, product affinity recommendations. If we look inside the resultant model, we can do so by right-clicking on it and clicking on Edit. And what we find is that the model consists of a series of rules that it has uncovered, and in fact that these rules you know, completely reflect the early analysis that we carried out using the web plot, where we're seeing immediately the same three-way relationship between purchases within the home office, electricals, and gardening category. In fact, this is giving us a little bit more information uh, in the sense that it's telling us how many cases that this actually applies to and what the level of confidence is we can see uh, associated with these rules. So here we're seeing, for example, a support percentage column, and it's telling us that 17% uh, 
of the uh, purchases in the entire data set consisted of purchases uh, within electricals and gardening. And that in fact, when that has occurred, 87% of the time, we're also seeing purchases within the home office category. So there's a strong affinity or relationship between uh, products that are getting purchased in these three categories. In the same sense, we're seeing a strong relationship between dining and kitchen here, where dining uh, purchases within the dining category consisted of just under 30% of the uh, purchases that were made and that when that has occurred 50% of the time customers have also purchased within the kitchen category. In fact we can add some other uh, in, uh, information columns here so we can ask for what's called the instances which tells us how many records or how many times this, these relationships are actually occurring within the data set and the lift value here simply tells us how much stronger it is than average. Anything greater than one shows a, a relationship which occurs uh, more times than, than average and more times than we would expect to see within the, uh, the data itself. If we want to look at what that new model actually produces in the form of data uh, that we can take actions on, we can do so by connecting what's called an, uh, a table node to the resultant model and this will show us the raw data and the new fields that the model creates. So if I run that Here's the raw data showing the card ID and um, people's uh, purchase history uh, as, true, as a series of trues and falses within the different product categories. And then we're seeing the actual recommendations or the affinities uh, with the associated confidence value uh, for each, each record within the data source. So if I wanted to focus on one in particular, let's just pick out one. Let's say we pick out uh, uh, case number 32 and go and generate that. and. Uh, ask it to uh, preview that case for me so I can focus in on it in a little bit more detail. So here's case number 32. We can see that it's a female, homeowner, what their income is, age 46. And it's recommending that for this individual that the next thing they should be recommended or the next thing that they should be offered perhaps are uh, goods from the electricals category or alternatively if that's not appropriate, then gardening, because it also has a, a, a relationship between gardening or alternatively uh, kitchen products. And we can see the level of confidence associated with that. So we can see how uh, these, this type of analysis can form the basis for a next best action strategy within any organization very, very quickly.